Hi, I'm Tom Lauchs, Wisconsin Rapids Community Media Coordinator for the City of Wisconsin Rapids. I want to thank you for joining me on Making Connections this month of May on this episode. We have a lot to bring to you in this episode for May 1st through the 31st. As you know, I'm outside uh, looking at the great river we have that's run through Wisconsin Rapids. We're lucky to have this great view. So I thought I'd bring it out and share it with you than rather being in the studio. Again, I'm Tom Lauchs, the Community Media Coordinator for the City of Rapids. And on this episode, you're going to get to learn a lot about things like the Cultural Center. I had a chance to visit with Stephanie Hartman. She's the executive director. I'll take you over there. I also had a chance to sit down with Sally Kistner and learn a lot about the Arts Council and bring what's going to happen there. And stay tuned to a program that's going to happen in July, I believe. Uh, Kids from Wisconsin. It's a great piece of entertainment. It's only one night. I'll give you more information on that as well. You're going to want to stay tuned to my main segment of this program of Making Connections. I had a chance to sit down within the studio and have a lengthy discussion about a new nonprofit called Love Inc., which works with local churches here in Southwood County. So stay tuned to Making Connections over this next hour. Stephanie Hartman. I'm the executive director for the Central Wisconsin Cultural Center. You can visit the Cultural Center during our business hours, which are Tuesday and Thursday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., Wednesday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., and Saturdays, 10 a.m. till noon. We are in the historic Johnson Hills building, which is 320 West Grand Avenue, and we are in Suite 104. So we're on the first floor directly across from the Job Center and we still um, are offering classes. We have an art gallery exhibit area. Um, we will have a pottery studio that will be up and running. We're not quite there yet. That's our next project. Um, and then we're offering a wide variety of classes. There's no cost to come and view um, whatever exhibit is up. The classes are on a per class basis and we of course always have the information available for um, the public. And um, we also have a kids uh, creativity corner where kids can come in and just create. We have lots of supplies available and we ask for a donation um, just to cover some of our costs for that. Our current exhibit um, is by Carol Stewart who is the former owner of Stony Birch Studio. So the entire show is Carol's. And then as we've done in the past, uh, we'll have shows from um, artists from the area and will do call for art based on whatever show is coming up. Um, our next show is featuring the Central Wisconsin Holistic Homeschoolers. They do projects through us so they will have a small show and then we are hosting the quilt show during Cranberry Blossom Fest for Material Girls. So that will be featured during Cranberry Blossom Fest along with um, the finalists for the Cranberry Blossom Fest artwork. We um, facilitated that process of doing a call for art and that artwork will be on display as well. What would we see if we come uh, here and visit? Well, Carol's so um, incredibly talented. So her paintings cover a pretty wide array. She does people as well as pet portraits and then a lot of um, landscapes and nature. We do have new classes coming up um, this spring starting the end of April. So we have a mosaic window class we will offer a beginning oil acrylic painting course. We're doing an abstract painting workshop, which is just a um, one night workshop. And then we're also doing a stained glass workshop, which will be a Saturday. It will be an entire day, but um, the students will finish a project. And how do they uh, contact you, at the website and phone number? Sure. Uh, the website is culturalcenterarts.com and on our website we do list all of our classes along with the times, the fees, and everything you need to know about the classes. Um, but there's other information there as well, of course. Our phone number is 715-421-4598.
I want to thank you for joining me here at Wisconsin Rapids Community Media. This is Tom Lux, and today my guest is Sally Kistner from the Arts Council. There's a lot of things happening coming in the fall, but there's one big thing happening in July. We're going to touch on base on that first, which is kids from Wisconsin. And then we're going to go down the list. There's quite a bit of things that are happening all the way through 2019. They're planned out all the way to next year in March as I glance at this short uh, quickly so Sally let's talk about the kids from Wisconsin because tickets are going on sale shortly they are tickets go on sale May 1st for the kids from Wisconsin show which is July 16th well that is coming up quick so if they want to pick up get tickets they can go to your Facebook page right the Facebook page should direct them to our website where they can purchase tickets or they can visit us at 1040 8th Street South in Wisconsin Rapids or give us a call at 715-424-2787 and this is May 1st. Tickets are $16 and that includes tax. Is there going to be one show or two shows this year? There will be just one show this okay. year and there is also an outreach associated with this show so kids ages 7 to 14 who would like to sign up can go on the Kids from Wisconsin website and sign up for that. Okay, uh, your hours over at the uh, at the council. We are open on Monday through Thursday from 10 a.m. to 2:30 p.m. All right. Well, all concerts take place at the Performing Arts Center. We're lucky to have that nice place. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. I bet the kids Wisconsin love coming there. It's they one do. of the best. It is Acoustical. one of their favorites. Yeah. Yep. And just uh, people don't know what kids from Wisconsin are. They're watching this for the first time. Give us what that uh, program is about. Kids from Wisconsin have auditions every um, February, and there are kids from all over the state who audition for this. They choose, I believe it's 10 singer-dancers, um, it might be more than that, 20 singer-dancers, I believe, and 13 to 16 band members. And they travel, they have a, a training camp that's 16 or 17 days in June, and then they travel around the state. Uh, they perform at the state fair, for about nine days in a row, also a couple shows a day. So they get a workout during the summer. Now these kids are high school kids, is that correct? Ages 16 to 20, I okay. believe. Okay, yeah, it, I've been to it several times. Uh, it's a great concert, enjoyable. Uh, they have a break in between, if I remember right, or they had in the past, don't um, know anymore? Nope, they don't oh, have great. a break. They go pretty much all okay. summer long, but okay. this season is their 50th anniversary okay. season, so it's gonna be extra exciting. All right, well get your tickets May 1st, and uh, they last until they're gone, pretty much. Correct. Right? And I, you know, you can fill the whole thing up, but uh, there's only one show. So uh, That's right. give the council a, a call or you can purchase them online. Um, yes. You don't need to give them a call if you can get right online and use your credit card. Correct. And uh, the way you go and you'll get those tickets to print off then. Is that you how that works? You can either print them at home or you can request that we mail them to you or okay. you can do will call. Alrighty, well mark those calendars uh, May 1st uh, for to buy tickets and the uh, show is July 16th. It's a Monday at 7.30 in the evening, so easy to make and uh, like you say, that is a Monday on the 16th. So before you know it, it'll be here and uh, you might as well get them now and buy as many as you can. And it's a, it, it, it's a great way to listen to some great music by some young professionals out there. And I might also mention that um, we are a nonprofit, so any proceeds from this is actually going back to the pack for maintenance fees. They've had um, some of their uh, programs cut, so this gives them an opportunity to purchase a few extra things. Um, the pack is 18 years old now, and there are a few things that need replacing and updating, so any proceeds will go right back to the pack. All right. Yeah, that's expensive to run. Eric Brunacher and his crew over there are going to be working hard. He does a great, job. Does a great yep. job. So uh, I believe he has kids that are working in that as well, right? Yes. So it's a, you know, it's a lot of talent here at a young age learning all this. So great. That sounds good. Now you have some more stuff here on our desk. I don't want to miss. This was the Arts, co arts Council. We're talking about kids from Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about this that's coming out. It's a ways away, but... It is a ways away, and it's part of our um, season. Last year we tried something a little bit different. We had dinner with a show. It's held at Lincoln High School and 
probably a quarter of the people who attended the show that we had it for last year also attended the dinner. So um, it was pretty popular and we decided to try it again this year. And it's being held in February again in conjunction with our show Rise Up O Men, which is a church basement ladies show. Um, we are doing, uh, let's call it an upscale church supper that will be catered. And um, we think it's gonna be pretty exciting. We even have jiggly jello that we're gonna serve. Anything that you might consider in a church supper will be served there. All right. Well, this date is not until February 21st, 2019, but these dates are pretty much set in stone. Is they that definitely right? are set in okay. stone. Well, then we're going to move on into this a little bit. Uh, these are your fall programs coming up, and I think it's good uh, for planning purposes to get those on your calendar. I know we're talking about them soon, but, you know, if you don't put them on, uh, you're going to book other things. The summer's coming quick, camping trips, all the festivals around the state of Wisconsin, Wisconsin. Right. Let's put this on here. I see October 19th. That's, yeah, it's not too long from now. It doesn't feel like it. But. <laughs> It'll be cooling off again by then. I huh? know. Yeah, actually, we could have snow by then again. Right. Let's hope not. <laughs> Let's hope not. So, uh, farewell to Angelina. Uh, is coming up. I'll just have you kind of go through them. You want to sure. just list them. Um, the viewers here will be able to see those as well as on the screen as we're talking. Absolutely. Farewell Angelina is a country group and it's four women who are extremely talented in vocals and instrumentals. Um, they just do a very awesome job and if you go on our website there will be a link to every one of these shows that you can have a just a little taste of what it's going to be like so you can check it out um, so that's a country show then um, November 16th that's on a Friday also Presidio Brass um, obviously it's brass uh, but they take a Broadway theme at this show so it's going to be Broadway based music um, let's see, our Christmas show this year is December 14th, Under the Street Lamp, which is Jersey Boys type music, mm -hmm. only it will have a Christmas flair to it as well. Then we move into January. On January 25th, we're bringing Sammy Miller and the Congregation. Sammy Miller is actually a Grammy-nominated uh, drummer, and he pulled together this group and it's joyful New Orleans jazz. It's just, it's really fun. Then we move into February and you can attend that dinner we were talking about earlier before you go to the Church Basement Ladies Rise Up O Men. And the Church Basement Ladies have been here a few times and they're always very popular in this area. We wrap up our season March 22nd with one that we feel is gonna be very popular, Staying Alive, it's a Bee Gees tribute group. And that one is self-explanatory. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you got a great lineup and a lot of stuff there that are gonna be happening. Uh, this year and next year. So mm -hmm. put it on your calendars, got questions, you can always call them, 715-424-2787. Uh, right. It's a simple call and or go online. Um, SaverTheArts.org and all that information is probably there now. It is. Alrighty. Well, before we end, Sally, you're the executive director here of mm -hmm. the Arts Council. I. The Arts Council is a program that was established how long ago? I just want to know a little bit of brief history sure. about it. You took play, took over several years ago now, is that right? Um, about a year and a half. Okay, a year and a half. Mm -hmm. So what what is the Arts Council and is it made up of a board? It is. Okay. The Arts Council was actually established in 1976, so we've been around for a while. And we basically put on um, concerts throughout the year, generally about six concerts. This year we added an extra one in with the Air Force Band. But um, we're run by a board of directors and we have a separate committee that establishes uh, the programming for the season as well. So I'm the only real employee. <laughs> Okay. The others are on the board. All right. Do you take donations throughout the year if you, you know, to help out make this happen? And you don't probably just get all from ticket sales. 
sales. That's correct. So to, how do they do that? We are a nonprofit, so we have some wonderful supporters, um, donors. We have businesses who advertise in our program every year, and we're in the process right now of looking for sponsors for the shows, as well as um, anyone, uh, like you said, donations mm -hmm. can be made all year long, but if you want to advertise, we would like to know now. We're in the process of pulling all that together because we go to, to press after September 1st and we need everything in place by then. That's right, and you have one booklet that goes to press, is that right, with all the uh, advertisers that might? We have a color booklet that we do, but then we also have a separate black and white insert that we print for each individual show. Mm -hmm. So you could also advertise in that one as well. All righty. Well, I want to thank you for coming by and Thanks sharing for inviting all, me. Yeah, and sharing all that information. You guys uh, want to know more? It's a simple phone call again, 715-424-2787. Uh, they're closed. Go to Saver thearts.org, it's gonna list all these performances. Uh, we're gonna have it on the channel as well for uh, information throughout the year. Uh, we'll have it on our bulletin board, so if you vi visit the Centralia Center, uh, we'll have this out there for you as well, and I'm sure it'll be in other areas that you go uh, around town, library, you name it, Sally's probably mm -hmm. out there uh, marketing this as she came in here, and then we wanted to help her out do that. So um, we'll leave it with that. Anything else, Sally, are we good? Um. I guess just that season tickets will go on sale in August, August 13th, and then individual ticket sales will go on sale September 4th, the day after Labor Day. All righty. Well, May 1st is really the first thing. It's kind of a mm -hmm. uh, slip-in show here with uh, kids went from Wisconsin, and it's the 50th anniversary. Don't miss that one. That's a great – I enjoyed going to it as a news photographer for the Tribune. Mm -hmm. Took a lot of photos. People enjoyed it. We actually they used to have a couple shows filled it out. So if there's only one show, I have a few feeling that it could book real easily and then you're not going to be able to get in and watch these young performers they could be stars someday they very well could it, be it, oh, it I should also mention we do have a local kid also oh. Megan Shields from Port Edwards well there so you go come out and support her yeah that's neat to see a local person in here Definitely. so maybe maybe we can uh, get her in and talk about about this with her before it would be fun. that would be fun just mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know what she plays for an instrument but she's actually a singer dancer there you go so maybe we can uh, you can find out and tell sure. me about her and absolutely come in here and do a short interview before this event or even yeah. before she takes off on June before 22nd. she goes to camp <laughs> yeah because that's a whole summer so all right. right well that sounds good look forward to that and you guys can look forward to that interview as well you probably only get it here on community media so absolutely all righty thanks again for joining me at Wisconsin Rapids Community Media I'm Tom Lux. Hi, I'm Tom Lauks, Wisconsin Rapids Community Media Coordinator for the City of Wisconsin Rapids. And this is Making Connections, and today my guests are Danita Carlson and Rick Murden. And this is about Love Inc. It's a new nonprofit organization. You guys may have heard about it. Um, we're going to learn a lot more, including myself, uh, what this is all about. And Danita being the executive director of the organization, Rick being the vice president. I'm going to go right to Rick. Rick, you're going to tell me a little bit about what Love Inc. is and then. Uh, Tell us more about things that you have on your agenda, and then we're going to get Danita to talk about her role as executive director on a daily basis, where you're located, all the above. So we okay. got a good 20 minutes to talk, and let me know. So let's start with um, there are many uh, Christian churches in our area. One of the things when, when we moved here back in 1984 was we saw a lot of the different churches uh, in town. Um, however, over the years, what we've come to see is that, um, number one, an individual church can only do uh, so much, only has so much capacity in terms of being present, being a, a model of Christianity in the community. Um, 
we've long longed for a greater collaboration among Christian churches. Uh, so that was in the back of, of my mind for, for quite some time uh, when, when Danita, well, Danita will go into the, to the origins of the organization, but um, we came upon uh, this model, Love Inc., and the Inc. stands for In the Name of Christ. So Love in the Name of Christ. It's a national model. It's a, called the City Transformation Model. There's 140 affiliates across the country and even into Africa now. Uh, the only other affiliate in Wisconsin is in Sheboygan, and we uh, talk to them frequently. They're about two years ahead of where we are in our development. Um, we've progressed to the point where this last December we've got our own 501c3 designation, uh, and we're, we're moving rapidly. One of the interesting things that drew me to the organization was the requirement from the very beginning to have a minimum of six different Christian denominations working together to form an affiliate. We did get that. We had a development board uh, put together. Right now we have a, a board of directors of, of 10. We have 12 partner churches and together we represent nine different denominations all working together. So that's kind of where we are now, but I'll defer to Danita to talk about the origins of all this. All righty, Danita, let's listen about that. As we were talking earlier, you had noted I worked at the Wood County Health Department, and I had been there for a total of 14 years. In the last three years that I was there, I had um, been the coalition coordinator for Healthy People Wood County, both the mental health and the substance use coalitions. And as part of the coalition work that I had done was was really pulling people together to talk about the mental health substance use issues we were seeing in the community. And as people were coming together, what we were seeing was the faith community was absent. And so uh, what had happened was I started connecting with different ministries and different churches in the community to ask them what they were seeing in their own congregations and out in the community as far as mental health needs, substance use needs, where they're seeing an increase in those and if they felt capable of uh, addressing the needs that they were seeing. And overall, they everyone had said yes, the needs were escalating and that they didn't have the time or the resources to really um, do the needs justice and they weren't quite sure what to do. And so as we had these conversations, I brought that information back to the coalition and we started talking about what can we do? What's a solution for the problems that we're seeing? And one of the things that had come to mind was uh, different city transformation efforts that were happening, not only around the state, but around the country. And so we started investigating those city transformation efforts and had come upon love in the name of Christ. And as Rick had noted, there is a love in the name of Christ of Sheboygan County in Sheboygan. And so we were able to go down to Sheboygan and chat with their executive director and their board of directors to find out, would this be a good fit for, for the Southwood County area? And through conversations that we had with them and with Loving National, we were able to decide that this would be a good fit for us. And that, those conversations were taking place early in 2016. And so our first uh, development team was established in April of 2016. Wow, there's a big change for both of you guys here in the last year. Mm -hmm. A lot of new things happening. So um, you were talking about denominations. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I don't, do you talk about all of the different ones that are incorporated in this yeah. is that can you kind of touch base with that yeah a so bit? part of it part of it is um the model is to unify the body of christ the the larger church into one face to the community so that you know the old song they'll know we are christians by our love uh, so that the church is seen as as one unified body trying to help people trying to help the community uh with the different denominations we know that there's a lot of things that um we believe differently or different reasons why there are different denominations but the one thing that we all hold uh, true is the commandment to love God and love our neighbor 
And so the Love Inc. model is a way for us together as the larger church to love our neighbor. So it's a unifying, it's a unifying movement um, that that enables uh, different churches that would not normally, you know, partner on different things to come together. Uh, the Sheboygan Love Inc. has about 45 uh, partner churches right now. We're at about 12. We're really happy with where we are and the receptiveness that we've had at the various different churches. So I think we're, and that, that 12 represents about 20% of the, the local Christian churches. So we're well on our way in terms of uh, informing the different um, churches that are out there about what Love Inc. is. And like I said, we have had a really good response in terms of um, wanting to be a part of this new effort. The mission is to mobilize right. local churches to transform lives and communities in the name of Christ. And so really what it is is mobilizing people in the pews to serve the community. So it's taking their gifts and talents that may not be used right now and mobilizing those gifts and talents and serving others in our community. So that's really the basic down and dirty of what love in the name of Christ is. And then and then Love Inc. is that coordinating force. It's that hub where we are working um, with the churches, coordinating those volunteer efforts within the churches. An example from Sheboygan would be that so you have a church member, um, let's say it's a small to medium church, you know, an individual church does not have the capacity to do all things for all people, right? So you have an electrician, let's say, with God-given talents in that area at this, this church, but cannot does not have the opportunity to utilize his talents because there's no you know electrician ministry or whatever um, through love inc type of a um, model it pulls together what those community needs are and maybe pairs that electrician with with other electricians into a force that can help people that need that need work uh, so there's a story that comes out of sheboygan about that happened and there's an elderly household that needed some electrical work paired up with a volunteer that could you know had those gifts and talents and not only took care of that person's uh, electrical needs but also formed a relationship with that person because the model is built on building relationships um, what we're not about is sustaining people in need we're about finding what is the root cause of the need and then helping them t with a long-term relationship to to mitigate that need to lift them up out of need so it's not it's not enabling it's an empowering program but it's uh, the Love Inc. model, there is no, there's no cookie cutter approach because it knows that every individual church is different. So we've had some churches that we've made presentations to, they see it, they understand the model, they want to be a part of that, and the, the pastor, let's say, as leader of that organization, signs on says, yeah, we will partner on that. Another church, I'll give you an example, um, my church, Grace Lutheran, um, we went through a process where we talk about it, uh, it went through the various committees to, to understand what it is and how it fits into that church organization. Uh, eventually we made a presentation at the church council, the church council votes and decides to, to partner with Love Inc. So it depends upon the various church and how they're organized in terms of how a church would join become a partner of love inc uh, the contact is very easy uh, it's it's 715-424-LOVE is our now our number so we are fortunate enough to get that uh easy to remember number we also have a, a website it's l-o-v-e i-n-c s-w-c so it stands for love inc s-w-c southwood county dot org uh, and on there you can see more about the model you can see about our partner churches there all right. Well, this is not a new idea. You said you're talking Very about good. Sheboygan yeah. um, it, within our state, and now you're bringing it to Southwood County. Right. And do you know how many maybe local churches are in Southwood County? Is there yeah. more than 100, I'm sure? Well, so you want to? Well, I was just going <laughs> to say, there's approximately 50 um, in the Southwood County yeah. area. And so what we've been doing since uh, when I brought up the date of April 2016 is we've really been mapping out contacts um, um, 
connecting with those churches and doing presentations, as Rick had, had said, and we've made presentations to probably about half of those churches, and, so, and some of those churches, as Rick had noted again, um, we've done multiple presentations. And so just as the people on our board had contacts within those churches, we started making those contacts and requesting to give them information about love in the name of Christ. And I think it's important to note, because we are an affiliate of a national organization, that was one thing that we really loved about Love, Inc. was um, there was a model, it was a successful model, and being an, an affiliate meant that there was a connectedness with other organizations, the other Love, Inc.s around the nation. And there's approximately 140 affiliates in 30 different states. And so we're able to connect with other affiliates and learn from them. And also there is a resource library online that is available to us. So we don't have to recreate the wheel. Things are already created um, and they are following best practice um, models that have already shown success and so we're not just going blindly mm -hmm. we have something a guide to follow which has been extremely helpful as we've been working the last couple years on developing love in the name of Christ of Southwood County and you brought up too the the it's an interesting milestone as last year they celebrated 40 years. So this model has been 40 years in development, you know, that 140 <laughs> didn't start at 140, right? Mm -hmm. So there's been a lot of continuous improvement over time. So the, the systems that are available now, the help that, that's available now has gone through and it's really a, a compilation of best practices. Now, how does funding work to keep you guys going? Uh, you're full time in this position, mm -hmm. um, you're as well as a Vice President, or I'm just a board member. You're a board member. Yeah. Uh, how does do you get support through the churches yep. uh, or donations? Can you elaborate on that a little oh, bit? Oh yeah, we take all donations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. But but typically, what we'll see is, and that was one of the surprising things too when we started to learn about Love Inc. Uh, the questions we had, and then when we were doing church presentations too, the question was, okay, what is what is the cost of being a partner in this? Is it, you know, is it per member? Is it per, and, and really it's whatever each individual person, what each individual church feels is appropriate. So there, there's no per diem or there's no, uh, there's no set fee. Uh, we ask as a part of that partnership that uh, they partner with us and be a, a financial, be of financial support to the organization. But it, to, to what extent is up to each individual uh, cool. congregation so it, it varies across the board uh, another question we had was you know from a funding perspective because you have to have as a uh, as a what we call a connection center as a facility to do this function requires space it requires utilities it requires people uh, so it, it does have a, a cost associated with it so how is that uh, how is that supported? And for most of the Lovings that have been in operation for a while, it's basically uh, the funding comes in thirds, in terms of a third from coming from individuals and businesses, a third coming from partner churches, and a third coming from grants for for foundations that are. Uh, this is part of their model to support this type of activity, city transformation mm -hmm. improvement. Now, was this uh, something that you wanted to do as desire over the past 10, 15 years, both of you? Um, you're the first to do that. You guys were the one that kind of initiated it, right? Yeah. In 2016 is yeah. it, when it started. When were you thinking about this? Uh, 5, 10, 15, 20 years well, you gotta, ago? You got to start with Danita. Right. It, started, it started with Danita, <laughs> and she got me involved. So. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'm just, you know, I'm just curious how it came about. Um, you know, you guys have both have had uh, big roles and jobs within our community and now you're both with uh, Love Inc and uh, you know that's a that's a big change I've been into big changes and new lifestyle new way of doing things but just how did when did it come about well I, I told a little bit of the history earlier right. but I think it was really birthed in me when I was working at the Family Center I was at the Family Center for a little bit over two years and had seen firsthand some of the very critical needs that were in the community and and for the first time ever 
I, I was seeing it face to face. I had lived here my entire life and you um, hear of things, um, but maybe to see it face to face, to see the sexual assaults that were happening, the domestic violence that were happening, the breakdown of the family, a, a lot of different things that I hadn't seen before, seeing on a daily basis. And at that time knew that, that things needed needed to change and, and was really feeling a stirring in my heart of, of what, how it could be and things that could could happen to change that and at the same time there was a couple gentlemen who had contacted me about human trafficking efforts in the area and they were the first ones who had told me about city transformation so when I transitioned over to the health department that's where I had heard the information was earlier probably a couple few months earlier when I was at the family center had heard about the city transformation efforts we have a monthly newsletter so every month we're asking our partner churches you know what's going on in your church that you would like you know so it's not just for that church but you'd like other people to be aware of or whatever so we're sharing information on fish fries or mm -hmm. uh two of the partner churches right now are, are running uh dave ramsey's financial peace university so getting that word out to that to that larger uh community in terms of what these individual churches are to to get more um, participation in whatever's already taking place. Yeah. So that's part of that's part of the, the communication piece. Yeah, exactly. Um, you're here, yeah. uh, doing that now, yeah. and go to the radio with Carl or <laughs> Tribune or. Yes, we were at, we were on the radio <laughs> with Carl on Good Friday. <laughs> that's a per that's perfect. Yeah, so, yeah. perfect. Yeah, great. So yeah, if we can get uh, information, put it on Facebook as much as we can, uh, that will help a lot. But I, I do see a need in the community to tie this together. That's a lot of the times there's all these great ideas groups, mm -hmm. um, but to get that word out, you end up become one sided. You know, maybe a group only has this side of people, like a church only has so many of the members and their friends on Facebook. But now you could broaden that scope and then hopefully get people that had no idea about it but getting but you're not reinventing the wheel you're not uh, you're not holding these conferences you're not doing those you're just helping kind of get the word out right. and but it, it's ministries really we want to yeah. touch base that it's ministry right not yeah. not just anything that's happening in the right. community right right, right. So, and part of it too is that um, through that 40 year evolution um, love Inc has a very um, helpful intake process uh, and what that intake process is meant to get at uh, moving towards the root cause of the issue and and addressing that root cause and not just something on the, the surface an example that came from one of the affiliates was somebody had come in through the love Inc process in need of food you know that's the that's the number one request from United Ways 211 is for food so the request came in for food um, the the need was verified, uh, but when they had volunteers delivering some of the food, what they saw was that uh, the kids were were in the apartment uh, sleeping on the floor. Okay, well then that connected to a part of their furniture ministry and got those kids beds. And then getting to know more about the family, they had some health needs, which then allowed them to connect to some different resources to help people long term. Um, what, what's needed, getting at that root cause. And so uh, we're very, very hopeful that this is going to be coming to us. And speaking about coming attractions, um, we are going to be hosting a open house on June 16th in our new facility. One of the things that, that's really been exciting is the way that God is working through this ministry. When we first started this, you know, it was a, there's a huge learning curve and we thought, how are we going to do this? None of us have ever started a, a a new organization, new nonprofit before. How is this all going to work? Who knows what about articles of incorporation and bylaws and all that, um, and all of the right, all of the legal work with getting a 501c3. But but God has blessed us time and time again with the resources. So we feel so strongly that this is His this is His calling. This is His design. And one of the biggest uh, indications of that is as we were working as a development team. One of our partner uh, churches at the time, um, their attendance was, was declining, and so they had to make the uh, very painful decision uh, about uh, to disband. 
and then but with the heart of Christ also wanting to leave a legacy for the community and so that that organization that's New Hope Community Christian Reformed Church uh, decided to gift their property their church their building the land uh, to loving and we're in the process of that right now of, of going through and completing that that transaction and that will be our our location of our our facility uh, and that's where we're going to have our open house on June 16th Saturday June 16th during Cranberry Blossom Fest uh, so we look forward to encourage people to come out and see who we are and what we're doing and learn more and and uh, hopefully volunteer or support the organization. What have I missed in our conversations about your about this new organization? Have I missed something, something else we want to touch base, something that the, the public might want to know more of? Yeah, and, and as, we've, as, as we have been making presentations and talking to people about this, uh, and the excitement builds, we're already starting to get calls. Uh, we're, we will not be open officially for, for business, or we don't, our Connection Center won't be open until August. Um, so we want people to know that we're in the process, we're on this learning curve, we're getting everything set up to be ready for that uh, August uh, opening. Uh, so just to be patient with us for, mm -hmm. uh, for a little while longer, I'd want them to know that. Yeah, I think that's very important to note that because we have been getting calls, people have been hearing about us, and the August date is, is what we're shooting for because right now we're still gathering the information, we're gathering the resource information and putting that into a database, and so we're not quite ready to open. Mm -hmm. And so that I think that was a good point to make. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like you're working a lot behind the scenes and uh, getting the word out ahead of time yeah. so people can kind of start planning. And, and because there's a lot of visits, it sounds like, that are maybe on Sunday mornings, Sunday afternoons, during board meetings. Uh, for you guys, it sounds like, to, to tell people about yeah. what you're doing and uh, so the board of a church can, can see that. But... Uh, I think we all see needs in this in this community, right. especially right. in the jobs that well, actually you both work in, myself, um, and you guys are, are taking it another step, which is great to help out in the community. And and uh, let me ask you this, Danita, what what is your ultimate? Uh, I don't want to say ultimate goal, but what do you see in the next over the next five years? Do you see more people? employed here working to help out is that a goal of yours or is it going to try to keep it small um i guess for love inc of southwood county we would definitely want to grow our partner churches we would definitely want to really have a solid volunteer base because the idea the heart of love in the name of christ is those volunteers and so those volunteers being trained and being able to go out into the community and serve and serve those in need and the beauty of it is really the relationship piece that relationships are being built and healing is taking place through those relationships and lives are being transformed and that's what really that's what love inc is all about is transforming lives and communities in the name of christ and i would say from my vision in five years um from other affiliates, what we've heard are the two the two primary programs um, that are utilized. One is called Affirming Potential, and that's so that everybody understands that we're all given gifts. We all have talents and gifts, and to discover what they are and not and how they can use them, how they can use them. We've seen lots of examples how those that have been helped by Love Inc. then become Love Inc. volunteers or Love Inc. Mm -hmm. um, employees uh, down the line. So affirming potential, making sure everybody understands what their gifts are and how they can utilize their gifts. And the second most common um, program that's utilized is faith and finances, which is similar to um, Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace University, but it's really getting a hold of how do we, whatever we're entrusted with, right, how do we be as responsible with that as we can? Better, better financial planning, better financial management to get people lifted them up out of poverty, out of, uh, if you're familiar with uh, the United Way term ALICE, Asset Limited Income Constraint Employed, so you can you can be employed but still be struggling, you know, right on the cusp of, you know, mm -hmm. one, one disaster away from disaster, if you will. Uh, so really, I would see that in five years that we have a much stronger, 
base foundation, and we would see our, our ALICE numbers uh, declining. All right. Well, in the name of Christ, is what you're saying, ultimately the church is here to help people with those kind of uh, not just problems, but um, that's really what, what it's all about. And, yeah. and volunteering is why, I, and I'll just interject my own editorial in there, is it's why we're here. Absolutely. We're, we're here. We're, why we're are we here? We're called to love our neighbors, right? right? God, uh, right. Jesus said, what are the greatest commandments? Love God? Okay, we're doing that. Love your neighbor. How do we love our yep. neighbor? You know, and that's what we've seen, too, in a lot of churches is when there's a need, the members of the church come together and they address that need. But again, uh, disparate churches, how do you get to that collective need? You know, how can you really get the, uh, the scale needed to address some of these issues? And that's what we're... Right. And it's hard just because, well, there's so many different religious organizations. And I think, you know, you're trying to bring all those needs maybe together. Absolutely. Or not just yeah. maybe, but are making, yeah. are putting it together. And it's hard with... A certain, just a certain, uh, like a Baptist or a Lutheran, they all have different uh, focuses. Difference, right, right. But yeah. but again, uh, what we see in common is that everybody. We have a lot of things that, a lot of differences in the different denominations. But we all believe that we're called to love God and love our neighbor. So that's what we focus on. That's what we work on. What we what we hold true together, and yeah. to have the church, the larger church do that and be a face of, of good to be a face of love to the community that's what we that's what we're hoping for all righty well i want to thank you guys for sharing all that information i learned a lot i hope you guys out uh, watching this program have learned a lot you have questions about it call them Absolutely. rick's going to give that us. number again just so we have it 715 Four two four L O V E. Now that's you. You have it. What is it? Five five six, six eight, eight three. three. Five six eight three <laughs> is love. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we learned a lot. And if you're uh, want to get involved, your church or you're a pastor, you know, feel free to give them a call. Again, they're out doing a lot of things right now, so they may not answer the phone right away. <laughs> uh, they might be getting out as they were in here earlier. They were already starting to talk about their move, uh, what they got to do to set up. So let's let's hope that all goes through. Which is probably going to happen before this show airs and you're Let's saying hope. this friday it is uh, april 23rd and uh mark your calendars june 16th, 16th. yes that open is house. an open house at your new location new location and, 710 and, 20th avenue north okay so, south 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 <laughs> <laughs> all right yeah, eventually i'll get there yeah, right yeah, yeah that's all right <laughs> yep so stop down and i'm sure uh we'll have more information you guys drop those off uh you know your your brochures yeah, or anything yeah. you have we can uh, put that on as well as uh, uh, tell the uh, local uh, church organizations that we work with on, yeah. uh, on a daily basis so again mm -hmm. thank you so much for coming Thanks, and enjoy the the weather outside and and good luck here with all what you've been doing I think it's gonna be a benefit for this community and Southwood County entirely so, so do we thank you Tom thanks